Thanks to the supporters of channel member Ollie Collins. Well, it may only have been by the skin of our teeth, but we did manage to qualify for the Champions League for a second season in a row. And now we've got £50 million to spend over the summer. I kind of feel like this transfer window is going to be the, the decision maker. We're going to find out whether Norwich become our forever club or whether I've taken them as far as I can. Hello and welcome to Club 4, part 24 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our season review and transfer special at the end of a very, very good season for Norwich Football Club. I've had people telling me that it's not the best season ever. Dortmund wasn't the biggest game in the club's history. Well, but I guess Paris Saint-Germain surpassed it. There's no disputing that Paris Saint-Germain was the biggest game in the club's history because of this run in the UEFA Cup in the early 90s where they beat Bayern Munich. Well, the UEFA Cup is not as big as the Champions League. The fact that we've got to a Champions League quarterfinal, we had that night away in Dortmund. That's got to be the greatest night in the history of Norwich. And now we're back in the Champions League again. These are the glory years for Norwich City. And we're going to review the season that got us into these glory years. What I meant in the intro, though, about whether it becomes the forever club or we've taken them as far as we can, we are now at a point where we've qualified for the Champions League two years in a row. We've got a big amount of money to spend. If we can't attract the players that we need to attract this summer to take the club to the next level, and by that I mean competitive in the Premier League for the title, competitive as potential winners of the Champions League. If we can't get there this summer because players still don't want to come to us because we're not a big enough club, then I think it's time to move on because at that point, it's out of my hands. I don't want to spend the next five or six seasons grinding the club reputation to get to the point where we uh, where we can attract those bigger players. If money and Champions League doesn't get the job done, it's time to go to a club where we can get the job done. But we don't know. I have no idea what kind of summer we're going to have ahead of us. In an ideal world, it's a very good summer. That's what I'm hoping for. And it was certainly a very good season. We've gone too far there. Um, we've skipped past our signings for the season. Everything is everything is getting all laggy again. The last time I recorded a transfer special, it got really laggy. I wonder if now we're 10, 11 seasons in, I wonder if this whole process is quite intensive for the game, drawing all this data together at the same time. And that's what makes it feel a little bit laggy when we get to that point. Let me know down in the comments. Do these screens lag a little bit for you when you're playing your own games? Because obviously I only ever see them when I'm recording a video or streaming. Signing of the season, as you'd expect, goes to Tammy Abraham. We knew he was going to be good. We didn't know he was going to be 33 goal contributions good and a 7.38 and a star man in the, in the Premier League and the Champions League. I don't know why it's saying he's anything to do with Aston Villa. This is what I mean about these screens being a little bit glitchy and a little bit laggy. Because we signed him from Roma. I don't know why it says Aston Villa just there. Did we sign anybody from Aston Villa? Can we go back a screen again and see if we can get that to load up properly, maybe? No, it's still going to say Aston Villa on there for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, Michaeli, of course, came in on loan from Manchester United. We have got an optional future fee, but it's a big one that I don't want to pay. And I'm hoping we can do a repeat of what we did with, did with Tipple last year let him go back to United and then try and buy him at a lower price than his um, than his optional future fee is because that optional future fee, £80 million, yeah, we're not spending £80 million on him. He's a very good left back. He's not an £80 million left back. Uh, Padron, expect to see more of him as he gets a little bit older. Uh, Romero is already playing as if he's a little bit older. And Tipple, we knew what we were getting. In fact, that's not really fair. We thought we knew what we were getting. What we actually got was 18 goal contributions. This guy scored one goal for us the season before when he was here on loan, and we spent £24 million on him anyway. He scored 11 goals this year. That's how you reward someone showing faith in you. A seeker, I don't expect to be coming back. He was a last minute. Bring him in because we needed another right back, although we are, of course, losing Wagyu. So we are down to one right back in the squad once seeker goes back. So... We might panic and bring him in again if we can't bring in the right kind of players. Yedro is definitely one for the future. And answer, I really like. You lot in the comments seem less keen on because you get all caught up in average ratings. Certainly for a holding midfield player whose job is there to defend, I don't expect him to get a good average rating. I don't imagine he ever will get good average ratings throughout his career. 
He's uh, he's at a six point seven eight. He's roughly level with his career average. That career average at Dusseldorf was enough to convince Bayern Munich to spend big money on him. I think he's good. I really like him. I'd love to bring him in permanently, but not again, not for fifty four million pounds. So we'll have to see what the situation is when he goes back to Bayern. Uh, season results wise, we were supposed to finish in the top half. We finished fourth, qualifying for the Champions League again for the second season in a row. Once again, pretty much filling Carrow Road week in, week out. But I don't know that there's any potential to increase the size of the ground or bring in more fans. So I feel like that might be a little bit of a cap on growth of the club right there. Uh, Pedro Luis, top scorer at 22 goals. And of course, the board are happy with what we've done. We've qualified for the blooming Champions League again. And how. How we don't have the, uh, I mean, I guess 5 0 away to Monaco was fun. I would say, was it 5 2 away against Dortmund was really fun? Really interesting. We've scored five goals away from home in the Champions League three times in our first ever season in the competition. Has that ever happened before? We're certainly not shy of a few goals, that's for sure. Finances wise, if things are looking good. Um, reputation wise four star I'd like to think four star reputation means we can attract some decent players um, weird to see that sponsorship money hasn't changed year on year even though we're now a Champions League club and broadcast revenue is down slightly which is really weird I think this is pre-Champions League money coming in I'm not sure how the Champions League money works I know we get it as we go but competition prize I guess competition prize money at 71 million I don't know maybe why would that have gone down Less of an FA Cup run? Maybe? That seems really odd. Everything else is up, though. Um, and as you would expect, Pedro Luis selling more shirts than anybody else. And Abraham actually outselling Alvarez. Means I was right. Alvarez, Al Abraham better than Alvarez. I knew it. This is the team of the year. Hoy and Hall in goal. A back four of Michele, Mateus, Noll and Romero. Really interesting to see Mate uh, Mateus in there ahead of um, Caesar, which is a very odd one. That must just purely be on rating because he played about half the season. Uh, answer at the base of the midfield. Your new second tipple ahead of him, Gilberto Carlos, then behind Abraham and Pedro Luis. I agree with everything apart from I have my Brazilian wonder kid centre back in ahead of Mateus. But it's good to have lots of good players. Fans player of the year, Tammy Abraham, as you would expect after the year he had. Young player of the year, Diego Noll. I think I said on yesterday's episode, he was like 27, 28 years old. In my mind, he was much older than this. The fact he was still qualifying for young player of the year makes me look like a silly goose. Signing of the year, as we know, is Tammy Abraham. Goal of the season went to Janusik, which I don't think we can show you. People said in the last video, why are you not showing goal of the season? It's not clickable. It always used to be clickable. Last couple of FMs, ever since they changed to this set of screens at the end, not clickable anymore. When it used to come in in the inbox, you could click on it. Top goal scorer we know is Luis with 30 goals. 22 of them were in the Premier League. Gilberto Carlos, most assists at 16. He was very closely followed by Tammy Abraham, as we saw on the other screen. Pedro Luis got most man of the matches. Abraham, top average rating. And pass completion. Best cap pass completion was only um, 66 out of 90, 66 passes per 90. And it's Haruna who got that. I feel like that's an area we could improve. I'm surprised... That's as low as it is, and it wasn't one of the regular first teamers who got it. Um, so records that we've set this season, we've uh, Pedro Luis has set the club record for most goals in a year. These are obviously all post-start of the save stuff. So if you're a Norwich fan and you're going to tell me about the guy who was the real top scorer back in 1956, um, that's why this is the new record. Pedro Luis on 30. Gilberto Carlos, 16 assists, is also a record. Michele with 17 yellow cards and one red card. If you count a red card as double, that means he's had a yellow card in 50% in of the games he's played in this year. Another reason why he's maybe not worth £80 million. But can we do better? You can be sure we'll be going and having a look at Fries at Schalke to see how he's been developing and how his price might have changed. And most league goals for the club, the all-time top scorer is Alvarez on 172 and Tammy Abraham, the new oldest goal scorer in club history. Again, Dion Dublin probably has something to say about that. I don't know if he does hold the record. I think he was older than that when he was scoring for Norwich at the end of his career. That's Norwich's all-time best 11. A lot of it was from before my time, so we don't care about it. Um, but what we do care about is picking out a few of these other inbox messages, finding the relevant ones. So the board are making some changes, it looks like. They're looking for mid-table in the Premier League again. 
which is weird because they wanted top half last year. Top half is above mid table, right? So they're happy for us to scale back in the Premier League despite giving me a pile of money. And they want us to get to the group stage of the Champions League, which we've already qualified for. And I'm out of contract at the end of the year. I feel like that needs dealing with. They do have some longer term ambition, ambition though. They want us to be classed as best of the rest by the end of next season. It's not this one coming, the one after that. Which I don't really know what the definition of best of the rest is. Um, become recognised as best of the rest outside of the Premier League's top five. So, yeah, like a regular sort of Europa League level club, but not necessarily regular Champions League. Well, I think we're already close to being there anyway. I think some of this stuff has changed. We're just going to go on to negotiate. It'll tell us what's new. So play entertaining football is new. Um, but that's fine. I think we do play entertaining football. We have to carry on playing possession football, making the most of set pieces, playing high tempo and using the club's youth system. You've got to give me some good players out of the youth system for me to use them. I'm glad that's only desired. Uh, the five-year plan to work within the wage budget. I feel like this is new. Minimum four-year contracts for first-team players. I mean, again, it's only favoured, so it's not the end of the world. But someone like Alvarez, Abraham, these guys aren't going to get four-year contracts at their age. So that's a little bit of a weird thing to have in your five-year plan. It does tend to get you to lean more towards a younger squad. But I think we've had a lot of success with bringing in older players in the last few years. We kind of want to keep that going. Um, but we will accept it. We don't need to argue too much. I don't think we're in danger of failing enough of them for it to be a pro problem. Team leaders are Alvarez, Noll, and Pedro Luis. I mean, if we get offers for Alvarez this year, I'm happy to let him go. We said it. We said the same last year. I suspect his value has dropped a lot after not really being a starter this year, and I'm happy for him to just see out his career here. I suspect he won't have the same longevity as Tammy Abraham, but I think he's a very useful player to have around because he he's that link between where we are now and where we were. I mean, he did three years in the Championship for Norwich. Um, yes, we will discuss our plans for next year, so... At mid-table, they're happy with that. That's so weird. Um, and we want to make a good account of ourselves in the Champions League. You just have to do whatever the board tells you to do. They may as well take this out of the game if it's going to be this pointless. Um, that's your the, the best 11 as it stands right now, although it has a couple of the low knees in. And I would argue Romero is better than Seeker, regardless. Um... We don't care about that. What's this? Golden boot. Pedro Luis finished third on the golden boot. Tight behind two guys in his 30s. Pedro Luis's time will come if he stays at the club. Michele. That's interesting. He's won PFA Young Player of the Year after I've been sat here going, he's not worth 42 million pounds. He only made 25 appearances and got booked 17 times. What the hell? <laughs> um, but he didn't even win our Young Player of the Year, but did win the Premier League one. I've won Premier League Manager of the Year. I think, for the second year in a row. Um, I th I'm pretty sure I've won that two years in a row. I have. Wonderful stuff. I mean, to be fair, we're Norwich and we've got into the Champions League two years in a row. I think that's fair. I also think that might be the kind of launch pad that we need to get me a better job somewhere. Um, and we're potentially going to be having a takeover. Oh, if we get... If, they, if they're going to bait and switch me... We have a £50 million pound budget and then a transfer embargo all summer. I will be furious. We're not under embargo just yet, though. Um, what am I trying to look at? Not staff. I was looking... Ah, you know, it is staff. I wanted to look at what jobs were available. Because, I mean, my stock is going to be high now. After getting sacked by Schalke, after winning Premier League Manager of the Year two years in a row, that should all be forgotten. There's nothing... <laughs> Schalke's available. They've been relegated. I mean, serves them right if they have. Are you watching Schalke? I told you, Champions League in five years. We've done two years with Norwich now. A new lot are playing in a second division in Germany. Should have trusted me a little bit more. I loved that Gile. I'm not going to go back to Schalke, especially in the second tier in Germany. There's nothing else available. And we will keep an eye out. I, I think the next move has to be outside of the Premier League. I don't think I'd want to move to another Premier League club in the circumstances of where we are now. It'd feel like doing the dirty on Norwich. That being said, if any of the like big the top three there come in for me, I'd probably go, oh, yes, please. Yes, please, I'll have that job. But what I'd really like, I still really fancy Dortmund. 
need Brendan Rogers to decide he's had enough. I think Dortmund would be a lot of fun. And I think it would be a great way to stick it to Schalke. <laughs> Buy a load of Dortmund gear as well. Do they do gilets? Right, let's um, let's come up with a plan for transfers rather than faffing around, mocking Schalke after they got relegated. We all know what needs to be done this summer because we've talked about it a little bit in recent episodes. Um, we need a right back because we're only going to have Romero. We need a left back because we've only got Tipple. So really, we probably need two left backs. Star ratings would suggest we need centre backs and a goalkeeper. I'm not that desperate to upgrade in those areas. These guys are young. They've got potential. I mean, Caesar's still got five-star potential. After two years at the club, he's obviously not going to be going to Burnley. Um, but I'm comfortable with the defence. I think the defence is fine. And I, I don't think there's any positions necessarily that need upgrading. It's more a case of we've got loans and we've got players who are leaving that we need to replace. So we need a couple of left backs. We need a right back. We need a holding midfield player. Unless we're going to really go with youth and take a bit of a gamble. We can have Zamorano as our starter and then go with Haruna and Padron as backups. So it's an option. It's not necessarily what I'm completely comfortable with. That's why we went with Ansa this year. Or apparently Tipple can play there as well. Tipple can just do a bit of everything, can't he? What a wonderful man he is. Um, and then for attacking-wise, if we had a time machine, we don't ever need anything ever. We do need to be conscious of the fact that Tammy Abraham turns 35 in the season ahead. And Julian Alvarez turns 33 in the season ahead and has already dropped down to three-star current ability. So he's in decline. But he also has a natural fitness of, fitness of 16, so there's no reason why he necessarily should be. When we used him last year, he was still great. So I'm not desperate to sell him. If we get 25, 30 million pound offer for him, we let him go. Casolare is probably only going to be patient for so long as fourth choice striker. He's another one who doesn't really let us down when he gets opportunities. He's good for half a dozen goals off the bench each season, which is great. But we might need a striker, if not immediately. It probably wouldn't be the dumbest thing I've ever done to find an 18-year-old five-star potential wonder kid to slot into the system to be ready to step into the void left by Abraham or Alvarez when the time comes. But as much as you know, that's going to be the first thing I look for and the thing I spend my entire budget on. Sensible me here at the start of the window would have that as like fifth priority behind these areas that actually do need immediate and direct replacements. And because I'd quite like Michaeli but we're not paying an £80 million fee. It almost leaves us in limbo until the 1st of July when he goes back to Manchester United and then we go to them and try and make a sensible offer. So I imagine this is just going to be pay £80 million. Pounds. Yeah, see, look at that. That seems insane. It might be time to look elsewhere. In fact, I talked about Fries before. I've now looked at Schalke and see that, seen that they've been relegated. Did he have a relegation release clause? Is he even still there? Uh, Fries, 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 are you any good anymore? I mean, you were great when you came in. Hmm. You got a release clause? Let's get him scouted. He might be the answer. I mean, what else could we steal? Cyan? On it by PSG and Hurt. I mean, we don't use wingers. We know how great he was. Almost worth starting to use wingers for. Schultz, we know, is brilliant as well. And he would fit into our system, but he's quite expensive. I think it's almost worth just giving the entire team a fresh scout now they've been relegated, just to see what we can pick off the bones. <laughs> Shouldn't have sacked me, should you? Oh, silly, silly gooses. Right. Time to do some time travel. Well, after all that, it turns out George Ansa wasn't, because this guy is. Our first signing of the summer is in. Uh, Domingo Navarro um, is an Argentinian international defensive midfield player. Um, can also play central midfield. He's, uh, he's 24 years old, three and a half star current ability, which makes him better than any other um, midfielder we've got at the club in that position. Um, we've got the two youngsters who are ready to surpass him at some point in the future, but... He's an immediate upgrade on that position that we were able to pick up for £12.5 million on a release clause. Job done. We don't need answer anymore. That's one of those positions we needed to strengthen. 
strengthened for much less money than I was anticipating having to spend. Um, other players that we're looking at, um, I've just noticed my director of football has just made an offer for this guy who, I mean, Brighton are the other club in for him. Yeah, I feel like that's not a player that I'm interested in. So thanks, director of football, but go easy on that kind of thing. So I'm already working on it. Um, we are looking at a couple of uh, fullback options. Ivan Fernandez as a right footer to play right back. We were just waiting for both a work permit and for him to be fully scouted. I prioritised the scouting on both of these. Um, and Alessandro Mura, um, who we haven't yet agreed to deal with. We did have Paris Saint-Germain and Arsenal were both into him. It looks like they've both dropped out. Um, he'd be an option for us at left back. The issue with both of these is they're kind of centre-backs who, who can play wing-back. It see, this seems to be what's available. I don't know how I feel about a six foot three right back whose crossing isn't great, but he is quick. He's going to get up and down that right hand side, but he's definitely more of a centre back at six foot three, or I assume he is. We'll know more when he's fully scouted. And likewise with Mura on the other side, he's quick, really nice, quick centre back. We could maybe bring one of these in as a centre back and to provide some cover at full back. Like if we're bringing in this guy to be Romero's backup and play centre-back as well, then it starts to make a little bit more sense. But I don't know that we want Murrah as our first choice starting left-back because, again, he'd be fine as a backup. The dream scenario, we get both of them and another left-back. The only problem is they both cost in the region of £50 million, although a lot of it is on the never-never. We don't want to go major into debt. But I think if we get both of those, we'd still need another left-back. Romero would still be our starting right back. We'd probably have to get rid of Mateus and still find a left back. So, huh. not ideal. The other one we're into, uh, Rodrigo Gaza, who's available on a free transfer. Um, again, we're waiting on a scout report to come back for him, um, but we've jumped in on this guy, mainly because he was sat there on my short list where we'd scouted him previously. And then Liverpool and Manchester United both offered him a contract. And I saw that as my cue to also offer him a contract. Um, he wouldn't cost us anything. He's not fully scouted yet. Uh, but he'd be this striker we were talking about getting. Two and a half, three star current ability, five star potential ability. He'd be fine as a fourth choice striker if either Alvarez or Casolare were to move on potentially. Or even, I mean, Alvarez would be the logical one if we can get money for him. If we can sell Alvarez... And um, Mateus for good money, which I think we could get 40 to 50 million pounds for the two of them. With 75% retained transfer revenue. And the fact we're only paying 20 million up front for those two defenders. We'd have another 30 or 40 million pounds to spend on a left back. And then I think this squad is exactly what we wanted to do within the budget that we wanted to do it within. Uh, Fries is not going to be the answer. We've had the scout report come back in for him. Um, and despite him being a very good player for Schalke, he's only a two and a half star current ability, four star potential ability left back in terms of our squad. So I think we've kind of moved beyond the stage where he would have been a good signing for us. If we'd have got him first season here at Norwich, I'm sure he'd have been great. Not so much anymore. So the search for a proper left back continues. Oh, I've done some things you lot aren't going to be happy with. This is this is very much a rolling the dice summer that could either make me look like a genius when all is said and done or could have me sacked by Christmas because the board have already changed their mind on the stuff that we'd already agreed on. This seems a little bit like they've gone against what we agreed here. Ignore that. We fixed that in a minute. Um, but they now want me to finish top six, top seven, qualify for the Europa League. And as a minimum, we have to get to the knockout round of the Champions League. They've also agreed to upgrade the training facilities and the youth facilities. That is all good. None of that is the stuff that you're going to be cross with me about. The stuff you're going to be cross with me about is transfers. Uh, because we signed both of those defenders I was talking about before. Um and somebody else. In fact, he's showing on... And another defender. Yeah, he was showing on both seasons for some reason. So you already know about Navarro. Navarro, great addition to the base of the midfield. Um, we've then got 
Um, Ivan Hernandez, oh, well, sorry, Ivan Fernandez, um, who's come in from Espanol, 21 years old, £51 million pounds he's cost me. I mean, that suggests, I mean, I always take that as a key to have we got good value. Um, if they come in and they're worth more than I paid from, even if it feels like I paid a lot, then we've probably done okay. Three star current ability, five star potential ability. This is the plan. It's all that, oh, these signings don't work individually. They work as a as a four. So we've sold William Mateus. I'll show you that in a second. Fernandez is our backup right back behind Romero and one of our four centre backs. So rather than going with four centre backs and two full backs on each side, I've basically got two starting full backs, four centre backs, and of those four centre backs, two of them can cover on either side at fullback. So we've only got six defenders. When I say it out loud, I seem like a lunatic. In my head, it works just fine. Um, and they're all first team quality. So Fernandez is one of them. Um, the other one who fits that mold, I mean, if we decide to do a three at the back with wide centre-backs, these guys are perfect for it. Alessandro Mura, a 24-year-old Italian, a little bit older than I would have ideally signed but again if we look at the value that he's got coming in we're all right even though he's only got a three and a half star potential ability um but he's another one who's coming in primarily to play center back um but also left back as well where he'll provide cover to our new left back who's in um he is in from lazio for 50 million pounds and then we've got our third can we is this working can we go back to the other screen please We've then got our third new defender, Aaron Ugo, um, who is our new starting left back. He's in from Dortmund for thirty-four and a half million pounds. Again, his value has gone up. I mean, he's another one who can play centre back. So again, able to provide a little bit of cover. They're all very flexible because remember, um, Caesar can play anywhere across the back four as well. Although as a left footer, we'd probably only play him left back or centre back, like we do now. So. There's probably an argument for another defender coming in on loan. But remember, Haruna and uh, Zamorano and the other young cent the other young defensive midfielder, they can all play centre back as well. So I think between these starting the like the main six and the youngsters we've got, we probably have enough cover. And that's before we've explored loans. Um, but look how quick this guy is. Would you look at how quick he is? Um so he's our new starting left back. And then as mentioned, we've sold Mateus, which hasn't gone through yet. Um, so he's going to Ajax for uh, £15.25 million. Pounds. So we've managed to sell him on a significant profit, despite him only ever being a regular starter back in that first season. Um, so that's the defence sorted. And then, as you've probably already seen as I've been switching screens, we've done stuff to the attack as well. We have agreed the sale of Julian, Fernand uh, Julian Alvarez. Um, he is going to be going to Atalanta, for £8.25 million. Pounds. Yes, it's a cut price deal. But he's actually out of contract at the end of next season. Um, we're not going to give him a new contract on big money. So if we're not going to give him a new contract, it was a coin flip between keeping him around for another year and then letting him go for free, which I was tempted to do. And if we hadn't been able to find a replacement, I probably would have done. But because we were able to secure the signing of Rodrigo Garza, I decided we were probably better off bringing him into the first team squad as one of the four. Um, it allows Casolare to stick around as well. And Rodrigo Garza becomes part of the first team squad. First choice, four strikers, two and a half star current ability, five star potential. He was wanted by Manchester United and Liverpool. Um, he's been kind of a reserve in Mexico for a few years, but he's our fourth choice striker. Casolare moves up to being first reserve, which I think is fine for him. Um, and Alvarez goes and gets to be a first-choice striker for another year or two to end out his career. In addition to that business, it's all of the transfers, and it's, I mean, we've spent a lot. We've spent a lot. <laughs> I mean, I, there's no there's no way to sugarcoat it. We've spent a lot there. That's like £160 million pounds of a transfer. There are a few clauses we can cash in, and we will look to do that in a second. But in addition to those leaving... Um, we've also got Wagyu leaving the club as well this summer on a free transfer. He's going to Besiktas. And of course, the loans that were here before, Michele, Ansa and Sika are all leaving the club as well. So what we've effectively done is replace the three of those. I mean, if you look at what's gone in and out, we 
we're keeping the squad structure roughly similar. And uh, Michaeli is replaced by the young by the guy from um Dortmund, Aaron Ugo. Ansa has been replaced by Navarro. Sika has been replaced by Fernandez. Wagu and Mateus as like a combination have been replaced by the other defender. Um Mura? Fernand yeah, Mura, Fernandez, and Ugo are the ones who've come in. And then Alvarez has been replaced by Gaza. And that, all of that, means transfer budget, as you would expect, is gone. And once the players who are leaving on the 1st of July go, wage budget is back down within budget as well. There's not going to be any more business unless we sell somebody. I don't want to sell anybody. I hopefully won't sell anybody. The disaster that could happen now is if we get a big offer for Pedro Luis that we have to accept and we lose Luis and Alvarez in one summer and we basically go into next season with Tammy Abraham at 34, turning 35, as our only first choice striker with Casolare having to make up the numbers again. That would be a disaster. So we hope that doesn't happen. But I guess if it does, we'll have the Pedro Luis money to then reinvest. So we kind of wait for the 1st of July now. If anyone really good is available on a free transfer again, we'll look to bring him in like we have done with Tammy Abraham previously and uh, Diallo last summer. We brought him in and then sold him on for a bit of a profit. Angelino is another old man we've not been afraid to bring in. So I'm a little bit more open to doing that these days. But yeah, that was, it kind of all happened within a few days. If you're a Norwich fan in real life in this universe, that's, that's a thing. That sentence makes sense. All those transfers kind of got confirmed within a few days of each other. Um, so obviously Navarro was a little bit early, but the 16th of June, Fernandez came in. And by the 25th of June, so just what, nine days later, there'd been another three three players come in and two established first team squad members had left as well. And that's basically our, our business done for the summer. It's the 25th of June. That's efficiency right there, which usually means it's all about to go wrong. I hope there's only three minutes left in the video, because that means nothing went wrong. Right, it is the 1st of July then, so with the transfers coming in and out, this is our current first team squad, which is smaller than I anticipated. 20, 22 people. That doesn't feel like a lot of people, does it? That really doesn't feel like a lot of people, especially when a couple of them, Haruna and Padron, probably aren't really ready. Yedro you, and Garza, you could probably put in that argument as well. Although their same star rating as Romero was great for us last season. Haruna, we've accepted a loan offer from Stoke to send him out for the season. Dropped down to four-star potential. I think we've probably missed the opportunity with Haruna. And I'm not that bothered because we've got Padron sat there as well, uh, ready to come through. But of course, if one or two of those leave, that's down to 20 players. As a response to that, we are trying to bring um, Seeker back in on loan again. He's the only one of last year's loans that we weren't able that we were able to make a new offer to. Um, so we'll bring him back in if we can. He's just a useful cover option for us. It allows the guy who uh, is it Fernandez, the the centre back who can play right back, to really just focus on being a centre back. Seeker can be Romero's backup again, and it gives us a seventh defender, which would I think that would make me feel a little bit more comfortable. And then um, I don't know if we can squeeze it through the budget. Maybe we might just be able to. Colin Schultz from Schalke, still shown as a wonder kid, still showing as five-star potential. He's the only player at Schalke who's scouted with five-star potential here at Norwich. I think as an option for us, both as attacking midfield and as the second striker alongside Luis. I think that's an excellent signing if we can get him in. And of course, he knows me already. I gave him his his full debut. Not on his favourite personnel list. What a turd. But fingers crossed we can sneak him in as well. That'd be awesome. If we have a look at the squad depth. We can see that positionally, we're pretty well covered everywhere. We are looking pretty good. Disregard the fact that we've only got three-star centre-backs. Some of these are going to push on in no time a goalkeeper would be nice, but this is not going to be the season for a goalkeeper unless we can find somebody on loan. We've certainly got good players in all positions. It's just the squad is dangerously thin. Less players than we had last year. We have got a few youngsters that we could maybe bring up into the first team squad. 
uh, Salinas, who he brought in a little while ago. In fact, I think we probably bring him up into the first team squad now because we do need another defender in there. Uh, Marin maybe gets a loan for one more year. Diego Suarez has a decent value, 10 to 12 million pounds. Maybe we get some of those into the first team squad as well just to fill the numbers out a little bit. Maybe. What do the media think of our summer so far? They are still only predicting us ninth. Fantastic. Well, it's been a it's been a frustrating first couple of weeks of July, but this makes it all better. Uh, Seeker turned down his loan to come back to us. Didn't want to come back for another season. Um, we tried to sign Victor Seaman on a free transfer. He didn't want to come in either. He went to Leon. But we have reunited with Colin Schultz, what, three years later? 20-year-old attacking midfielder or striker, three-and-a-half-star current ability, five-star potential ability. It's not asking me to send him on a language course. Does that mean he already speaks English as well? Presumably from hanging out with me. He's fluent in English already. I'm taking all the credit for that. He was hanging out with English Kev. Um, that's how he's developed over the last couple of years. I think that was the season I got sacked. Didn't play very much that year, and but has slowly but surely broke into the team and had a full season last year, 13 goal contributions. Uh, but we're obviously going to use him as an attacking midfielder, as another option up front. I think we could probably, I mean, if I was being really brutal with squad management, we could probably move Casolare along, along now because we probably don't need five players who can play up front. But in light of the fact that we weren't able to get Seeker, um, and we've now sent Haruna out on loan as well. And we've only got a 22-man squad, even with him. I think we just keep things as they are. Worryingly, we've got a lot of players. Seven players, I think, going off to play in the Olympics. I really hope the Olympics are done with before the season starts. It's saying there are four players away on international duty. Cesar, Fernandez, Mura, and Ugo. What's the commonality amongst those four players, boys and girls? I'll give you a minute. Yeah, they're all defenders. Four, th I mean, they're all capable of covering at centre-back. So with Mateus having left the club, the other three centre-backs... Oh, God. Who are we going to play at centre-back on the first day of the season? If Noll gets injured, it's a double disaster with bells on. Even with Noll fit, it's going to have to be Zamorano, probably, because Padron's also away on international duty. So I guess Zamorano's been playing centre-back first day of the season unless Brazil or Italy get knocked out of the Olympics early or Spain. Someone's got to get knocked out, surely. Oh, I didn't even anticipate that being an issue. I mean, you spend, what, £150 million on defenders in one window, and this happens. We have no defenders left. It will be fine. New season starts a week today, and this is the defence situation at the moment. Remember when I said we had six defenders in the squad? All six of them are unavailable. How has that happened? How has that happened? Oh, no. Well, we've been emergency loan shopping and we've got this guy in, Matthew Hughes, on loan from Tottenham for the season. Um, he's a six foot four centre-back who can also cover at left-back. Two and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. was on loan at Stoke last season. So he's in. Um, we've also, rather luckily, got all of the Olympic guys back. So we've still got an injury crisis at the back. Noel, Caesar, and Romero all still injured. Reasonably long term as well. Noel's going to miss the first three months of the season. Caesar's going to miss the first month. Romero's going to miss the first month. That's three of our starting back four from last season, and it means that I mean it's just the game telling me that my bad my plan was a bad plan. 
I acknowledge now the plan was a bad plan. Um, we're going to play Zamorano purely because I know nothing about this guy. And I'm a bit afraid to just throw him in for his Premier League debut. Um, we'll at least try him from the bench first. He only arrived like two days ago. We're trying to get Seeker back in as well. We might be able to get him through. As it is, um, we'll be playing Aaron Uga, the new first choice left back at left back. Uh, Fernandez, who's the centre back who's going to cover it right back, will play right back. The other guy who can do that is going to play centre back alongside Zamorano. It'll be fine. Navarro is a deep line playmaker, so that's perfect there. And Schultz is going to make his Premier League debut, possibly as our new starting attacking midfielder. Um, certainly our new number 10, taking over that shirt from Alvarez. So big boots to fill for Colin Schultz. Very excited to have linked back up with him again. It's not all bad. We do need at least one more defender in this squad. I am regretting everything at this point, and I will be taking my medicine tomorrow. Luckily, it's not the hardest start to the season we've ever had. Famous last words, Brighton, Wolves, Villa, Spurs, uh, four little clubs to start the season off. Um, if you're a Brighton, Wolves or Villa fan, that was just a setup for a dig at Spurs. Don't worry. Uh, but we do need those, uh, those key players back for Chelsea and Man United and Liverpool back to back to back. Or we could be starting this season off in a little bit of difficulty. You'd think after spending the best part of £150 million on defenders... We'd have enough defenders, wouldn't you? I thought I was so clever. I thought it was such a good plan. Never going to try and be clever again. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.